Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we're going to continue on uh, based off what we did last time. Uh, last time we had uh, Surat Quraysh in which talked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the Kaaba and talked about the pilgrimage that the people would do to come to the Kaaba and also the travel that they would do to get their goods and to make sure that the, their society would thrive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them what? Remember who's the one that protects you during these times. Remember the person who Allah gave you the city, who gave you the, you know, the power of having the Kaaba, the Kaaba being in your area and being a center of commerce and being a center of pilgrimage and allowed you to, uh, you know, thrive economically, politically. No other tribe was going to try to get involved with you because you guys are the protectors of the Kaaba. Remember who's the Lord of that. And again, now, Surat Al-Fil, is another reminder of a similar, a similar sort of kind of reminder. So I'm going to first go over that, read, read the surah, then the literal translation, and then its implication in our lives and the stories behind it. So, uh, ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصب مأكول صدق الله العظيم So the little translation goes as follows Are you not aware of how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? Did he not utterly confound their treacherous plan? and sent against them flocks of birds, which pelted them with stones of sand and clay. Thus he made them like stalks of devoured leaves. So just to go over this sort of fear, there's a whole story behind this. So before the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mecca was still there, Quraysh was still there, and they had their Kaaba. And the Kaaba there, like we said before last week, it was a center of pilgrimage. Everyone would come to the Kaaba to do their, uh, their idol worship from all over the Arabian Peninsula. And that had a couple implications on it. One, despite the Arabs being a very tribal and they would get into fights a lot, no one dared to fight with Quraysh. No one wanted to get involved with them because why? They were the protectors of the Kaaba. And their idols that they used to come and do pilgrimage for worship are there in the Kaaba. Basically, they're kind of like held hostage there. They're held hostage there, the Kaaba. So if anyone tried to cause problems with them, try, in terms of tribal, a tribe wants to go and attack Quraysh, they'd be too worried about what would happen to their God that they have over there in, Kaaba, in, the, in, in Mecca. Second, because of how much pilgrimage there was, it led to a lot of economic benefits. It's where a lot of the money in the trade and the selling, it became a trading hub, like any place, any place that where there's a lot of people coming in and also leaving out and a lot of trade, you're obviously gonna have economic benefit there. There's gonna be a lot of interactions there. And third, just politically itself as well, and the honor and the prestige that they held, and in terms of, especially in the terms of the eyes of the Arab, prestige was a very, very big thing. So that's what the Kaaba, gave Quraysh. That's why it gave Quraysh. And they saw themselves above because they were protectors of the camp. Now, after seeing all these benefits from the Kaaba, there was a, uh, from, the, uh, from Yemen, a person named Abraha, which was the Abyssinian emperor. He saw this, he saw this, all this, like, like people, pilgrimage, a huge amount of people going to the camp. And then that leading to the economic benefits, political benefits, no one wanted their, uh, you know, deal with them and all that kind of stuff. They were very protected. And he's like, why do, why can't I have the same thing? I mean, how can I build the same kind of thing where people now want to come to me so I can thrive economically, politically, people have respect for me and things like this. So he said, you know what, let me do this. Let me build a really, really nice and luxurious church. So it's something that could have the same holy significance as the Kaaba. That's what he did. 
He built a huge church, very beautiful, and built very well. But what he noticed, that no one was coming to do pilgrimage to the church he had. So people were wondering, why? Why does that happen? Well, he was wondering because of how why, like, why isn't no one coming to this church? Later on, like on some accounts as well, you see that some people even from Quraysh, they went to the church over there and they started vandalizing because they were just, they took it as a joke. They took it as a joke. They, they, they held that the Kaaba at such a high level, at such a high pedestal, and it deserved that high level of, of prestige that they viewed this holy church as just like a copycat, fabrication. So no one wanted to go there. So then what? The only other option Abraha had, had in order to make his holy place the most relevant place in the Arabian Peninsula and past that as well, so people can do pilgrimage there. What was the other option? To eliminate it. If you have something that's so high that people want to go there. But what? You eliminate that. He wants to eliminate it, so then now people have no other choice but to go do pilgrimage to his, uh, the church that he has over there. So that's what he did. And now, nowadays, when you want to bring down some huge building, what do we really do? We, uh, you know, we bring, uh, what's it called? Const uh, construction workers come in and they tear down the whole building. They have big, huge machines. Well, back then you didn't have that. You had elephants. You had elephants, and that's what Abraham did. He used a huge army of elephants. And he came and he went to Mecca to bring it there. Obviously, the Arabs and Quraysh heard about this. And according to some narrations, they went and fled. Why? Because they didn't have the power capable of going against a huge army of elephants and soldiers. There is no way that they were able to be able to do that. So they fled. And everyone thought this was going to be the end of the camp. But what happened? As soon as Abraha reached Mecca and he was about to go to the Kaaba and destroy the Kaaba, you have to remember this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house. It's, de it's defended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happened? Like in the ayah it says, what? And sent against them flocks of birds, which pelted them with stones of sand and clay. Basically, missiles from all, from all the way in the air, birds dropping down super fast, stand in clay, and they kept on falling on all the elephants, the people that came, to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it as what? He made them like stalks of devoured leaves. So you have a leaf, it's already pretty thin, pretty weak, but devoured as well. It was crumpled, destroyed and everything. So there was nothing left, nothing left of the whole army that everyone was feeding around the Arabian Peninsula. So as a Muslim right now, when you look back at the story, you think, oh, Allah, this shows how you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting this place, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting his house that he swore to protect. And it's a place of admiration. It's a holy place. And it actually increases our devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it shows us a reminder of his ability, right? Well, that wasn't the idea that the Arabs had before the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became a Rasul. They took this incident as what? That it validated Quraysh's holy status, if that makes sense. It showed that they also were the protectors of the Kaaba and they had the help of God, the help of miracles to take down this huge army that no one in the Arabian Peninsula could take down. No one could take it down, but they had the help of God. So they're definitely holy. They're definitely held in a very high status, which what affirmed their status, made them even more popular, made it a bigger place of trade. Because they said that, oh yeah, this is from us. We're the ones who took down this whole huge army of elephants. We're the ones that took down this feared enemy and protected the Kaaba, thus elevating the status even more. And then, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu got the revelation, what does this ayah say? Are you not aware how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? That's how he starts off the surah. Are you not aware of how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? Telling them what? 
shifting that authority that not they're not the ones responsible for taking care of the capital. They weren't the ones that protected it. Rather, it was your Lord. Your, God, your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who protected the Kaaba, not you guys. They're saying, which even further proving the point that everything that they had around them that built in their society, trying to hit that idea home that everything that you guys have right now is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So think, stop being ignorant and think to yourselves. There were so many signs. Because for sure, you guys didn't bring those birds to bring down that huge army of elephants. You guys, that Kaaba was going to be destroyed. But it was through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it was kept safe. It was through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in the last the surah from last week. It was through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you guys were able to trade and go through the, uh, the, the, the heated, heated deserts and also during the winter as well. It was because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help in the Kaaba being there in Quraysh that it became such a big economic location. So kept on asking to think and think and think about, just contemplate what you have right now. Contemplate it. Don't ever think that this is from you. It's actually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also what? It's also another reminder for the for a believer is that, and also the disbelievers that if I refuse Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from me, and I disobey him. This punishment that was dealt to Abraham and his men, the same thing could have been done to me if I continue to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It might, by, might not be the same thing, but I will for sure face a punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in numerous ayat about the people that don't follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them, doesn't make Islam his way of life. He describes that punishment. So it's just a continuance of reminders and trying to wake up the people's minds. Trying to wake them up. So there's some greater purpose. There's some reason why your society right now is the way it is. And, and that's kind of the, the main idea of the whole surah. Inshallah, the idea was hit home. Just that it was, it was mainly to get the people in Quraysh to realize, just look back at the past events. Like you'll notice later on, it talks about the Qawm Ad. The people that built the caves, Qom Thamud, Lud. It, you know, they'll bring up multiple, Allah SWT will bring up multiple stories of these. And they're not just stories for us, like, oh, mashallah, this happened? Oh, amazing. They're stories for us to contemplate on. And it was stories for them in the past because they knew these stories very well. Even before that it was shown in the Quran, they knew about these stories. They have heard these stories of Qom Thamud, Ad, Lud, what happened to Abraha. And um, they lived it. They lived the one that they lived it. That was their life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling them, see all of these miracles and disasters that happened, the same thing can happen to you guys. The same thing can happen to you guys. Trying, trying to wake them up. And this was kind of the da'wah that was happening in Mecca. Waking up the people, getting them to think. And, and that's kind of the main idea of uh, the surah. Are there any questions? I don't have a question. I have a yeah. comment. Mm -hmm. The story just makes me think of uh, Mecca today, or Saudi in general today, as in how much fitna they try to bring in to the holiest city in the world, slowly by slowly. And as you can see, what they use it for, not for the right purpose, but they take advantage of the pilgrimage and they take advantage of the people. And they, you know, they they restrict certain people to do pilgrimage and, and the, the prices are high and the fitna that they bring in and the culture that they bring in all this to the to the holiest city in the world and it's like we're you know a thousand four hundred years later but look at what happened you know 1400 years ago so i'm not sure that's actually a really great point really really great point we've it's kind of exactly similar to what yeah. happened yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah any other questions yeah do you know where the people of the elephant were coming from like so they were coming from yemen from yemen so abyssinia look Anything else? Okay, inshallah, jazakallah khair everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.